Okay, so welcome um, to my uh, workshop. So, um, who am I? Uh, I'm soon to be fourth year student at Harriet Watt University, uh, studying at the Edinburgh campus. Uh, I worked and contributed uh, on various open source uh, projects. You can find, find more about uh, my projects on my website. Um, so, the topic of uh, this workshop is minimalist web apps. What do, what do I mean by that? So, let's look at an example of what's not a min minimalist web app. So, if you're a Harriet Watt student, you're probably familiar with this portal. This is the web app uh, where you can access most of the university services and resources. So, how did how long did this page took to load? Uh, to load? It took about while logged in, it took 15 seconds to load the page and downloaded seven megabytes worth of resources. That's a lot for a web page with links and news. Seven megabyte, uh, megabytes might not be much these days, but looking back at the Apollo Apollo guidance computer. The, devices on, the device on the right is the input and display module and the golden case on the left is the main computer casing. So, how po powerful is this computer? It's not that fast. Uh, looking at the processor, it's only 0.043 megahertz. And that's megahertz, not gigahertz, which is how we measure modern uh, processors. It only has uh, 72 kilobytes of ROM, that's read-only uh, memory. That's like uh, the amount of space you could store your program in. And they programmed uh, the Apollo's uh, program uh, on assembly. So that's like they hadn't written it uh, to, be, to take as little space as possible. Uh, and that's all it took uh, with four kilobytes of RAM. That's all it took to land a man on the moon 50 years ago. So is that portal website 100 times more complicated than the program that landed the man on the moon? Um, well, there's many reasons why it's unfair to compare modern software with the program that on the Apollo guidance computer. But this teaches us a very important uh, that even very underpowered systems and tiny programs could do amazing things. Um, so could we be m more mindful writing software and try to reduce complexity and size? Luckily, I found a Hacker News clone written in uh, React framework, uh, which looks exactly like the original one. Uh, so let's compare the two. Uh, the original one took f uh, downloaded 52 uh, kilobytes of re uh, resources, while the React clone took one megabyte uh, to load, uh, and it took twice as uh, double the time to fully load the page compared to the normal one. So how? So the, obviously that's not a good. Um, what's it called? Um, not a good um, step forward. Uh, with technology. So how can we fix this problem? Progressive enhancement. What is what is it? Uh, it's a web design strategy, strategy where you focus on the core content, then progressively add enhancements on the content so you always have the core content available no matter what browser you use, whether the content delivery network is down or your internet connection is flaky, you still have that core content and the forms and everything. Uh, this is the strategy which gov.uk uses. Um, uh, on their online services. So even if your browser doesn't support HTML, uh, only supports HTML with no CSS or JavaScript for any reason, you still still get the content and forms. You could uh, learn more about their strategy on their blog post, which is linked in the description of the stream. Um, they also found out that one in 93 visitors um, didn't load uh, JavaScript. Um, uh, so and most of those who didn't load JavaScript is not because they manually turned it off by um, uh, using like an extension called NoScript or disabling it in the browser settings. So uh, because the service doesn't break if those uh, parts of the resources aren't loaded or supported, those uh, users can still view the content and, and interact with the forms, which is quite important, especially for government services. Uh, another benefit of uh, progressive enhancement is accessibility. Uh, because the content is immediately available, it makes it easier for screen readers to find the content and read it uh, aloud in, cor in the correct order. Uh, so what can you do uh, to make um, the web a better place? So first, you can choose to build your next project uh, with simple and well-tested technologies. Uh, try to avoid using technologies which are 
usually overhyped and uh, using technologies that just because it's like the next big thing. Um, this includes technologies like React.js, Angular, Vue.js, or even jQuery. Uh, these frameworks usually require uh, require huge JavaScript resources and tens of thousands of lines to even hundreds of thousands of lines of code, uh, which your browser has to download, interpret, and execute correctly. Uh, and these frameworks usually have bad performance and accessibility because it just adds so much layer on top of the document. Um, so it makes uh, accessibility programs hard to de harder to, de to, de to detect content on the, uh, on the page and display it in a correct manner. Um, so I like to start building web apps with absolutely no JavaScript. So then I, con uh, then I consider adding them uh, for uh, enhancing the user experience without making it a requirement. Uh, also on top of this, I, I avoid using big CSS frameworks such as Bootstrap. Um, so, um, because these adds a lot of new CSS rules. Um, if you really want to use something like Bootstrap, you could modify it to only include the parts you'd need. Uh, so even if you started the project using progressive enhancement, it's, uh, if you add a lot of bloat and make it a requirement for your uh, project to run, you're defeating the purpose of the strategy. So always start um, with something basic, uh, add uh, progressive, uh, progressively enhance the user ex experience um, and yes so hopefully um, your program would uh, your web app would prefer, uh, perform much faster um, and would be more accessible to people who uh, couldn't view uh, couldn't see properly like with um, people who are blind or have um, uh, seeing difficulties um, so that's all uh, this is my website and this is my email address if you want to contact me for uh, any reason or ask some questions or uh, whatever that's my email address and my website I have uh, my blog there um, and my projects you can view them and yes thank you for watching